Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sunny, and in this particular video, we are going to discuss about the retrieval argument generation that is RAG. So, guys, recently I started my YouTube channel, and on my YouTube channel, I'm uploading the content related to the generative AI. So, if you haven't checked, guys, please go and check. And here, guys, you will find out multiple videos related to the generative AI. And I'm trying to covering each and everything in a sequence itself. And I'm trying to maintain one playlist as well. So here in the playlist section, actually, you will find out the playlist related to the generative AI. And the name is the name of the playlist is generative AI from basic to advanced. So yes, uh, I'm recording so many videos. And in this uh, video, in today's video, basically, I will teach you about the rag. Okay, and not uh, with a few, uh, not with a simple one, right? So I will teach you the end to end thing related to the rag. So in this manner only i am uh, regarding each and every tutorial so if you will uh, check guys definitely you will get it and if you find out that uh, really this channel is helping you uh, for building your generative ai concept uh, then please subscribe the channel and like the video and leave your thoughts as well so here in the description guys if you will check with the description so i added one google form as well so let me show you that let me show you with the other video so apart from the introduction apart from the roadmap if you will check with other videos right you will find out the google form in the description so you can write your thoughts as well uh, over there as well so that i will get to know that what my audience want and based on that basically i will try to uh, record i will try to record the content so guys uh, i i am having a rich experience in uh, artificial intelligence machine learning mainly in machine learning deep learning and i work with the generative ai also and with the ml ops also so along with the generative ai i am thinking to record one extensive playlist on ml ops so guys uh, don't worry i will be coming up with ml ops and i will be coming up with azure azure machine learning aws machine learning there are so many things basically which i am thinking to record okay so yes i think uh, let's start with the session now so please guys subscribe the channel if you find that this is the valuable for you so i hope you got to know the topic so in this particular video we are going to discuss about the retrieval argument generation now this video actually uh, this uh, topic actually i divided into various part so this is the first part because here i to discuss lots of things because what i have seen that uh, this beginner right so whoever is having zero knowledge with respect to generative ai or maybe ai machine learning deep learning so they are not able to cop up with these type of topic like rag okay or fine tuning transfer learning they is still lagging over there so what i thought that okay i won't cover the overview i will cover in depth related to these type of topic so here this uh, particular topic basically i divided into various sections so in this particular section in this particular part I'm going to discuss till uh, four point and then uh, I will discuss in the next part. Basically, I will create one rec system from scratch. Then I will discuss that how you can use the rec system with respect to the multimodal multimodal means text to image or image to text. Then we'll discuss about the rag versus fine tuning, which is better option. So whether you should go with the rag or fine tuning, then we'll understand the evaluation matrices of rag. So if you are going to build your rag system that how you can evaluate that because that is very very much necessary and after that we'll discuss about the important research paper and at the end basically we are going to implement different different type of rag in the python itself okay so let's begin let's start so here uh i think in total there will be five uh four to five parts so this is the first part of the rag and in this particular video i will teach you the end to end rag pipeline so what all component is there and what all thing basically which comes inside the end-to-end -end pipeline pipeline now you will get to know each and everything okay so please make sure that you are watching this video till last and one more thing i would like to tell you here i have to cover so many things so i will go in little slower pace so that i can explain you in a better way if you if you are finding out it is slower then you can speed up the video you can watch it at 1.5x so that you will get a better experience this is a my personal suggestion to all of you okay so let's start let's begin with the video now so here uh, you can see so first guys we'll start with the introduction introduction in the introduction basically we'll discuss about what is a rag okay now uh, here if you will find out so each and everything basically i kept on my blackboard itself and here itself i try to create one uh, document kind of thing so no need to go anywhere here itself i kept all the link all the images each and everything over here itself so guys see how beautifully i have created it and it takes a lot of effort guys so please uh 
like if you find this a valuable then definitely you can like it you can leave your comments and all okay now here you can see so this pipeline actually i divided into various section so here in this particular pipeline uh we'll discuss about the ingestion process we'll discuss about the uh here uh you can see retrieval process and then we'll, uh, we'll discuss about the generation process and here i have included so many things so many architecture and many advanced term i am going to discuss over here right so this video can be quite long uh around 30 to 40 minutes so please uh, make sure that guys you are watching till last if you want to get each and everything related to the reg system okay so let's try to discuss the reg system guys here uh you can see so first let's try to start with the definition itself so what is the definition of the reg so here i kept multiple definition of the reg so let's see so here i'm saying that rag is called retrieval argument generation it's an architecture used to help llm okay llm means what large language model like gpt4 gemini gima okay i think uh this is the open source model gima is an open source model which uh, has been released by the google itself recently google has released it i think uh day before yesterday only uh you can go and check with this particular model it is a uh, pretty amazing like llama is there mistral is there right so these for uh, if like we want to get a better experience related to this llm model right so here actually we use the rag system rag, rag means what a retrieval argument generation so here if i want to get a better response uh, with respect to this particular model because this model is not having each and every information so definitely we'll have to augment the information so how we can do that we have two ways first is rag system and the second is fine tuning i will come to the fine tuning also I will try to discuss about the fine tuning and all but as of now let's try to understand about the rag okay so here you can see response by using the relevant information from additional sources and reduce the chance that llm will lead to the incorrect information so here along with the llm here i can write so along with the llm what i am going to do i am going to connect open i am going to connect some other information right so i am going to connect some other information and how we are going to do that how we are going to do that tell me so this document actually document means what my data which i am keeping somewhere in the databases right and this database is basically which i am going to be connect with the llm getting my point so this is the overall idea behind this rag system so if i want to uh make my model like uh, uh if i want to make my model like much more efficient in that case i will have to use the rank or if i want to make my model task specific or, or domain specific basically or problem specific in that case definitely i will have to use the reg reg or fine tuning so here we are going to talk about the reg system okay now another, another definition it is similar to that only so reg is technique that enhance language model generation by incorporating external knowledge external knowledge means another uh, the outside knowledge right so external knowledge this is typically done by retrieving relevant information from large corpus of document and using that information to inform the generation process okay same thing same thing i'm trying to convey over here now here you can see the second third definition with reg the llm is llm is a leverage knowledge and information that is not necessarily in the in it weights mean okay weights uh, meaning is it is not inside the training so what is the meaning of it guys so here i'm trying to say that uh, whenever i was training the whenever i was training the llm at that time uh, at that time i haven't included those information right so i haven't included those information so for that what i'm trying to do here tell me for that what i'm trying to do here so here i'm going to connect my llm with with one database with one knowledge base so that it can provide me a accurate information getting my point okay so all these three definition is trying to convey the same thing now why we should use reg what is the idea behind using this reg right so here guys you can see uh limited knowledge access as i told you that llm is not having each and every information if we are talking about gpt guys so gpt uh here i can write so gpt also if we are talking about gpt so gpt also has been trained till 2022 data right till this particular year only if we are talking about gemini so it is uh like little better compared to this compared to this gpt right so there are so many model basically uh which you can compare uh, based on the training and all now here guys is still this model are not able to answer a specific question so here uh to this particular model if you are going to ask then what will be the gp what will be the like uh, gdp of the india okay current gdp of the india so here you can write here you can ask 
what will be the current gdp of the india so definitely it's not going to be answer the question let's say if you are going to ask that okay what sunny sir has taught in this particular video so definitely it's not going to be answer for that also right for that question also let's say if you are going to ask any domain related question so let's say any e-commerce related question uh let's say you are going to uh, purchase something over the amazon and if you are going to ask that a particular system means through the gpt model then can you tell me the review or can you tell me the price uh can you tell me the price of this particular uh this particular product so definitely it won't be able to answer okay so in that case what i will have to do i will have to use something i will have to like uh uh, either I will have to fine tune my model means uh, on my uh, requirement specific task or or basically I will have to connect with the external sources means I will have to connect with the knowledge base. So that is the exact idea behind this right. So limited knowledge access. I think it is clear lack of transparency. So LLM is struggle to provide transparent or relevant information. So it might mislead to you. So here in the next point, I have already mentioned allocation in answer. So it might mislead to you with respect to the information and all. And that's why we use the reg system over here. Okay. Now, if you are talking about the reg architecture, guys. So here is my reg architecture. And this particular architecture, I divided into three section, into main three section. So in the first section, basically, uh, there is an ingestion, ingestion of the data. In the second section, retrieval. Okay. Uh, means obtaining of the data opt uh, like uh, we are obtaining the data and the third one basically generation okay so we have three stages of the rag architecture ingestion generation and uh ingestion retrieval and generation now let's try to understand these uh, three uh, process inside the inside the architecture itself so here guys you can see what we are trying to do here so here actually we have a data so this data can be anything this data can be document pdf tags html xml anything it can be anything over here now what we are going to do we are going to extract the data and after extracting we are going to divide into a chunks into a various chunks right i will come to each and every point then why we should divide into chunks what is the benefit of it each and everything we'll try to discuss over here itself then what we are going to do we are going to convert into a embeddings right what we are going to do guys tell me we are going to convert our data into what into the embeddings embedding means what embedding is nothing it's just a numerical representation of the data i will come to that i will try to give you some sort of a glimpse but don't worry i'm going to create uh i'm going to create one dedicated series also on top of the vector database and the embedding because it is very very important uh it is very very important we can convert any type of data into the embeddings nowadays then what we are going to do so here we are going to build a semantic indexes i will come to that also semantic indexes and then we are going to be stored inside the knowledge base now this knowledge base can be anything it can be vector database it can be graph database it can be sql based database i will come to that also because this pipeline actually i have broken into the many section guys okay and believe me if you are watching this video then you no need to go anywhere for this rag and all so this process actually it is called ingestion from where from this document to this database so this is the first part then a retrieval basically so what is the meaning of retrieval retrieval means obtaining okay obtaining the knowledge from the from the knowledge base or getting the knowledge from the knowledge base so here let's say my user is asking something so here is my question i'm converting into the embedding and then i'm performing the semantic search over here and based on that it is going to find out the top result so this process is called this particular process is called a retrieval okay now here uh the third one basically generation now what i will do here so here my llm is generating a output means my result is going over here so here you can see what is happening tell me guys so here my result is going to this llm so here is what here is my result here is what here is my result result plus what result plus prompt okay result plus prompt now this is this is a thing basically i'm passing to my llm and then finally my user is getting the answer and this is the entire idea behind the rag and in how many steps i have broken uh, the architecture tell me in three step now let's try to understand this each and everything in a very very detailed way but before that let me give you some idea related to this embedding and all so here guys uh, first of all guys uh, if we are talking about the retrieval let me clarify a few terms over here if you are not good uh, with that so here if we are talking about this retrieval so what is the meaning of retrieval guys tell me retrieval is nothing retrieval is representing obtaining the data obtaining the data from where from the knowledge base right obtaining or getting the data from where from the database obtaining the data 
obtaining the data from from database okay now here uh, we are talking about the augmentation now augmentation means what so augmentation argument means what argument means enhancing information so here what i'm doing enhancing information enhancing information okay enhancing information using using llm okay using llm so this llm basically what i'm providing i'm providing the uh, information from knowledge base okay info from knowledge base from knowledge base and we are providing the prompt that is nothing that is a user query right so here the, here i am talking about the augmentation and retrieval now generation means what generation is a final stage where llm is generating my output right what llm is doing tell me llm is generating my output now this llm can be anything so this llm can be uh, like uh, it can be jimny okay or it can be like uh, uh, llama llama 2 right it can be like uh, any sort of a model let's say gpt or whatever model you are going to use gpt4 or something so here i hope this retrieval argument generation is clear to all of you in a simplest meaning now let's try to discuss about the embedding so here i would like to give you some sort of an idea related to the embedding also so here guys uh, if we are talking about the embedding so embedding is nothing embedding actually it's a numerical representation of the data okay this is what tell me this is a numerical representation of the data so here if i'm writing so first of all let me draw one uh, so let me draw the graph over here so here is what here let's say is my x axis sorry y axis and here is what here is my x axis now here if i'm uh like uh so this is what this is my x axis let me write it down over here x axis and this is what this is my y axis now uh here let's say if i'm saying one vector okay in this particular direction so what will be the coordinate of this vector tell me so here my x com y component will be zero and the x component will be somewhere something now here if i'm saying this one right so what will be the coordinate of this particular point so here i can write so here y x component will be zero and y component will be y now if i'm representing any vector or any point over here in this particular space so here i can say i will be having x component and the y component both right so what i'm doing guys here i'm going to represent this particular point in 2d space right and here you can see this is nothing this is the coordinate of this particular point so this is called vector okay so vector is nothing in linear algebra if we are talking about the linear algebra so the simple definition of the vector is nothing it's a collection of the it's a collection of numbers right so here i can represent this particular point let's say the point name is what p1 so i can represent this p1 actually by this x and y so this is nothing this is the vector now this is the p2 let's say so how i can represent this p2 tell me p2 i can represent with this uh x and zero now if we are talking about this p3 guys so what is this p3 p3 is nothing zero and y so this is my vector vector related to this specific point okay vector is nothing it's a representation of the point okay it's a representation of the it's a representation of the data all right sorry it's a representation of this particular point or this uh particular feature how many like uh this particular point how many feature is containing it's containing two feature x and y i hope you are getting my point what i'm trying to say over here now let's try to understand with a different example so here let's say uh if i'm talking about the king okay so here is what here is my word king right here is my word let's say queen and here is what here is my word let's say men okay here is i have here i have three words basically so this three word actually i can represent in terms of vector so let's say here is my vector so i, I can like uh i can represent in terms of any sort of a vector don't worry i will come up with a dedicated session related to the word embedding and all so here let's say this uh, king basically i'm going to represent with this particular vector let's say 0 0.1 0 0.5 0 0.8 okay one is here and zero is here now queen let's say i'm going to represent like this 0 0.2 0 0.5 0 0.7 0 0.9 and zero now here man is what 0 0.8 0 0.1 here 0 0.2 here 0.3 or 1 now what i'm doing here so i'm representing this king this particular word into five dimension right this this vector means what five dimension how many values is there i have five values over here so i'm representing this particular vector into five dimension now this every value this every value is nothing it is representing some sort of a property right feature related to this king right 
so here i can write let's say uh the king is what the king is poor no king is not poor so here you can see the lower value related to that now here you can see the higher value related to this man i can represent it let's say the king eats uh like junk food so here you can see yes a uh, little bit queen also now here now here uh let's say the king is wealthy right yes king is wealthy so here you can see the number so this king is wealthy queen is wealthy and man is not wealthy now here you can see king is or uh, uh, like uh king is having power yes king is having power this one this one this one okay now here i can represent this particular one this particular word basically with another feature so here this is what this is nothing this is my feature okay and this king actually i am representing into the five dimension and this is the vector basically which i represented over here it was into the two dimension okay x and y so i think you got to know the basics of the vector over here so vector is nothing it's a set of numbers right it's a set of number and yes definitely i can represent into n number of dimension so here this is the vector related to this p1 right so here if i'm writing king right so king if i'm writing this p1 as a king so how in how many dimension we i'm representing to this king i'm representing into two dimension x and y now here basically i represent into how many direction tell me guys into five direct uh, five dimension and this is what this is a specific feature okay this is a specific feature so here uh, x and y basically you can take two feature x is going to my one feature that says going to be a poor okay and here this y actually is going to be another feature let's say junk right so by using this two feature you can represent the king over here got it so this is the basic of the embedding now guys here there is one thing if i want to check the similarity between the embedding if i want to check the similarity between the embedding or between the vectors anything you can say so we have different different ways so the first way basically which is called dot product which is called dot product the second way uh, which is called uh, basically cosine similarity cosine similarity okay we have another way also we have another way let me write it down over here another way so we can uh, do it by using the euclidean distance euclidean distance now we have jacquard similarity also right jacquard similarity also right so we have a different different like of ways so let, let me show you this cosine similarity and this dot product basically by using one example so here what i'm doing so here let's say uh i have x axis and y axis now what i'm doing here so here let's say i have two feature one feature actually which is representing to the tech and the second feature which is representing to the uh fruit okay so i have two feature now let's say here actually uh i have two things okay i have two words the first word is what the first word what is apple the apple that fruit basically the second word is iphone iphone now here what i'm doing so here let's say if i want to represent to this apple in terms of this two feature right so how many dimension guys tell me two dimension so one is tech and the second is fruit now over here if i'm telling if i'm talking about this apple okay so here uh apple basically it's a fruit so it will be in this particular direction and the tech part will be zero over here so how i can represent to this how i can represent to this apple so i can represent to this apple f zero okay tech part will be zero now if we are talking about this iphone so how i can represent to this iphone tell me so here if i'm saying iphone so here so the tech part will be uh so fruit part will be zero over here and tech part will be t right this one so this is the representation of the tech right so here i can represent you two dimension now what is my final vector related to this apple tell me f and zero all right and here if we are talking about the iphone so here we have two dimension now with respect to that what will be my final vector so here zero and t right now now what we can do now let's try to calculate the similarity over here so how i can check the similarity so here i can write the similarity let's say if i'm going to do a dot product so here what i'm going to do guys i'm going to perform the dot product so how i can do the dot product guys so here is what here is my f okay and zero now here is what here is my zero and t now here i'm going to perform the dot product so it's going to become f into zero plus t into zero so finally it will be zero so here i'm saying that this two vector is not similar to each other right it is not similar to each other now if we are going to find out the cosine similarity cosine similarity basically so cosine uh similarity so in that case what i will do i will take the cos of this vector right so here the angle you can see the angle is 90 degree and we know that the we know that the cos 90 is equal to zero so in both cases in dot product and in cosine similarity i am getting zero and here also visually i can see that there is no such similarity in this two vectors so iphone is different right iphone is different 
and apple is also apple is completely different from the iphone so apple is a fruit which i can eat and iphone is a phone basically which i'm using right so i hope you got to know about the embedding similarity and the basics is clear to all of you don't worry i will be coming up with a dedicated video related to this particular topic now you will get to know the thing in a more easiest way right so here guys i was talking about the rack pipeline so you can see the rack pipeline now in the rack pipeline basically so here i define into three parts so first is what so first is uh, like here you can see the ingestion the second is called the second is called retrieval and the third is called synthesis okay now here you can see in the ingestion basically we have a document we are going to convert into the chunks right and then we are going to convert into the embeddings and here basically what we are going to do we are going to uh, like uh, doing the indexing and all and finally we are saving it somewhere let's say into the database so here you can see already like uh, in the already in the like a diagram itself so here what we are going to do we are going to save this thing inside the database now in the retrieval what we are going to do we are going to make a query we are going to say uh, we are going to fetch the result from the database and here is my top k result since this is nothing it's a generation actually so here we are going to combine our data which we are going to uh, which we are going to fetch from the knowledge base and we are going to pass to the llm along with the given prompt and finally we are going to generate a response okay now guys over here how many process was, the, was there three process okay three process inside the basic rec pipeline now i will come to this architecture also because uh, intentionally i kept this architecture over here whenever you are going to deal with the rag or a table augment generation you will find out a different different kind of architecture but here guys the meaning of each and every architecture is same okay we are trying to implement this thing only that's it nothing else so here uh, what i can do i can come to the ingestion process so in the ingestion basically what we are trying to do over here so guys if we are talking about the ingestion so in the ingestion actually we have five main stages so the first stage you can see like uh, we have a document then we have a chunking then after the chunking basically we have embedding okay then uh, we have uh the fourth one this is what that's what there's a vector embedding and then the fifth one basically which is a database or a retriever right so i have divided into this five section now let's explore each and every section one by one so here in the ingestion process you can see we have different different uh like a stages right so the first stage is a document so guys document means what document means it can be any file so it can be local file it can be csv file it can be tsv file it can be json file pdf docs web pages xml database cloud storage or any type of location so from where you are getting the data okay now the next step is what so here the next step is chunking so after the after the like collecting the document what i will do so i will create the so i will create the chunks from the data so here guys uh you can see i've uh, written different different question related to this chunking so first of all let's try to understand the definition of the chunking so chunking means we collect the data from various resources and split the data into the chunks okay in, into the chunks now here i written the first question that is why chunking is required and the second question is how to figure out the idle chunk size because this is the two major question which people find out now here if we are talking about that why chunking is required and what is the idle size of the chunk before that i would like to highlight some points over here so we are talking about the chunking guys see here let's say we have a data so let's say we have the entire data so this entire data actually which is called corpus corpus right so this entire data actually it is called corpus now this data actually i can divide into the small small chunks chunks is nothing actually this chunks is also called the document document okay document so this chunks actually it is also called document and it is nothing it's a sentences it's a sentences so this is my entire paragraph this data this corpus is nothing it's my entire paragraph and here from the paragraph basically we are going to create a chunks means sentences now we have one more top one more term basically which is called which is called tokens right so from the chunks from the chunks basically what we get tell me from the chunks itself we get the tokens 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 is nothing actually it's a word 
okay it's a word now this is the terminology basically which you need to understand with respect to this nlp so we have words means we have tokens from the words from the tokens basically we form the sentences okay the sentence is actually which is called which is called document or which is called chunk and after collecting so many chunk basically we can create the paragraph paragraph and this paragraph is nothing it's my entire data or which is called the corpus i hope you got to know the hierarchy over here now the next thing is what so here you can see we have a separate different different question so the first question is what why uh chunking is required so we can fit the entire document whatever document whatever data we have so we can fit uh, we can fill the uh we can uh like fill the entire document okay so to that uh, to the uh like uh, llm also but in that case there is two things so the first is what first llm will not be overload uh, with the with the information right so if we are if we are going to pass the entire data so in that case what will happen you know so here if we are going to pass it then llm actually it's going to be overloaded with the information so here i have written not so no llm will be overloaded with the information now over here it is even this llm also it is having some sort of a limits right so if you are talking about the llm guys so it is also having some sort of a limits and here if you are talking about the gpt so it is having limit uh, related to uh, uh, around like uh, some sort of a tokens right so even the jimny also which is having some limit related to the tokens if we are talking about the cloud a which is having limit some sort of a tokens right uh, or any other model like llama also so this is also having a limit related to the tokens different different variants you can check and you will find out the limit related to that right so this model actually it is having a limits with respect to the token so that's why we cannot fill the entire data to the model now how to figure out the idle chunk so here guys i mentioned two things the chunk should not be too small if we are passing too small chunk in that case it is not going to it, it is not going to uh like uh it's not going to be a sufficient and uh here in that case the retrieval process is going uh, the retrieval process is going to be affected now here if we are talking about the next one so next one is the chunk size is not be a larger one right so the chunk size should not be a larger one over here and if you are going to pass a larger one so in that case my model get mislead right so it can get overloaded with the information so here we have to maintain the chunk size right we have to maintain the chunk size now here i think you got to know so here you can see words right words is nothing which is called token sentences which is called chunk or the sentences it is also called the document now here the paragraph is nothing paragraph is the entire data or is the entire corpus i hope this thing is clear now based on which thing i have to find out the chunk over here so here i have mentioned couple of point so let's try to read this point so first is what first is data characteristic second is retrieval constraint the third one is a memory and computation resources right the fourth one is task requirement now fifth one is a experiment and the fourth one is a sixth one is a operational right now here guys i have attached one link also so if you will go and check with this particular link so here let me show you this uh link basically and with this particular link you can uh, check okay so let me copy and paste it over the google so just wait i'm going to copy and paste it and let me show you the beautiful article with respect to this particular chunking so here the chunking size right what should be your chunking strategy so this pinecone actually it has mentioned each and everything chunking strategy for the llm applications and all now here you can see so how should be your chunk so chunk consideration based on what category uh based on what uh, like a uh, properties you can decide the chunk size here you can see like each and everything chunking method so fixed size chunking content aware chunking right so by using the different different module like nltk spacy recursive uh, chunking how you can do that so here you can see by using the length chain splash specialized chunking so by using the length chain okay latex is there inside the length chain itself so it has given you like so many method for the chunking now based on which feature you need to decide the chunking so here i mentioned couple of point basically you can read this particular article and you can get the different different way of the chunking you can check with the different different libraries and you can check with the different different method like recursive chunking or a sentence splitting or maybe you can check with the specialized chunking and all which is already there inside the length chain and in the different different library now coming to this point so here based on this data characteristic means if your data is clean if your data is a uh, well structured in that case uh 
like uh, in that case that chunking uh, the chunk size will be a different right if your data is like too much messy and if your data is too much complex in that case you will have to keep a different chunk size retriever contracts so here uh, in the, in terms of the retriever contracts so here you can see just a second guys uh, okay fine so here if we are talking about the retriever contracts so what was the next point guys here the next point was the retriever contract just wait just wait this one so here uh retriever context means retriever constraint so here if you have any retriever uh related constraint right i will come to that databases and all and with that the idea will be more clear to all of you what is this retriever constraint and all because uh if we are not going to build the specific indexing and all okay and if we are going to create a lots of chunk means uh two small small chunk lots of chunk or maybe two bigger bigger chunk and if we are not going to write the specific indexing in that case also you'll find out that your model will mislead I mean it, it, it won't be able to provide the like two specific information now here the next one is memory computation so if your memory is uh if your memory is basically if you have a memory issue basically with respect to your system in that case also you should uh, optimize the chunk size task requirement for which task basically you are going to create a chunks so for the text pre-processing or uh, for the code generation for the text generation for the text summarization there might be a different different task right so related to the task experiment you can do means you can uh like uh, first you can take a different chunk size then you can take a different chunk size you can do a multiple experiment right overlapping consideration so yes overlapping information also means if you are going to create a chunks let's say this is what this is my data this is my data so from here to here this is my one first chunk now from here to here is my second chunk now from here to here is my third chunk now here what you can do you can perform the overlapping consideration means this is my first chunk now the second chunk you are not going to start from here instead of that you are going to start from here this one this one so this is the overlapping so this from here to here this is your second one now the third chunk you are not going to start from here right so you are going to start from here let's say this is the third chunk so overlap also you can consider with respect to your chunk size so i hope you got to know the meaning of chunking now here you can go and check with this pinecone uh, documentation they have provided you each and everything and definitely you will be getting it in a precise way right or different different techniques and all and along with the code and based on these particular uh points basically you can define the size of the chunk now coming to the next part which is very very important that is called embedding so over here guys you can see if you are talking about the embedding embedding now after chunking we convert it into a vector embedding definitely in the architecture also i shown you the same thing vector embedding numerical representation of the data so we have lots of ways for creating the embedding so here you can see bag of words tf idf n gram so this is a frequency based technique now the second one is basically neural network based technique so in that word to bag fast text word almo open air embedding jimny embedding each and every model basically they are using neural network behind it okay now uh nowadays we are not going to use this frequency based embedding because uh it is not going to work at all and uh here actually we are not able to keep the semantic information also so semantic information we are not going to capture inside this particular uh in this particular way right in the frequency based embedding definitely we'll have to use the neural network based embedding so here uh by using the word to bag fast text bot almo open AI embedding Gemini embedding we can get the embeddings right we can get the numerical representation of the data so generally you will see nowadays people are not using word to bag also people are not going with the bot also people are interested in this open ai based model or Gemini based model and we have lots of models so here basically i capped a different different model i will show you the leaderboard okay now here you can see so if we are going to talk about embedding right if specifically we are going to talk about the embedding so i shown you the i shown you the embedding basically right so here i explain you the embedding concept if you will like scroll down definitely you will find out over here so what we are doing we are going to convert word embed word into the vectors right so this is called word embedding now here guys if you will look into today's rank right so the advanced rank basically so there they are not going to perform word related embedding okay they are not going to perform the word related embedding what they are doing you know they are going to perform the sentence level embedding right sentence level embedding so here let's say this is my data so here basically what i have i have my data 
so here i'm not going to be convert word by word vector instead of that what i'm doing i'm going to create a chunk from here right what i'm doing i'm going to create a chunk from here and from that specific chunk right from that specific chunk i'm going to create a vector getting my point then uh how we can do that what is the way what is the way behind that so i can show you first of all uh let me show you the leaderboard where you will find out all the embedding techniques and all and then basically i will show you the sentence how you can perform the sentence label embedding so first of all guys let me copy this particular link where you will find out this leaderboard and don't worry i will provide you this a uh, particular documentation this particular uh note so that you can go through with that now here what i'm doing i'm going to pass this link and let's see let's see the leaderboard so here uh hugging face has provided to me one leaderboard now in this leaderboard basically you will find out a different different model and this model is nothing this is the embedded model okay embedding model what to bag is a model now what to bag is an embedding model neural network based model if you don't know about that don't worry i'll be cover up in the upcoming session along with complete and entire uh like a vector database now here you can see the model size embedding dimension more m max token how much token you can provide over here average uh so 56 data set okay how many data set uh on top of how many data set they have trained classification average clustering average fear classification re-ranking average retrieval average there are so many there are so many parameter basically they kept over here if few parameter is not clear to all of you like re-ranking retrieval average right summarization average don't worry once i will explain you the evaluation techniques of the reg right and once i will come to the retrieval operation at that time this thing will be clarified so don't worry about it now here guys you can go through the, this particular website and you can check the embedding model with respect to the different different value if some model if like let's say if some model is not here inside this particular leaderboard then definitely you can search separately and you can get the information over here but by seeing this particular leaderboard definitely you will get the idea that how to evaluate embedding based model okay now the next thing is what here so here our uh, leaderboard is fine so i was talking about the i was talking about here sentence label and word label embedding okay now you can check out to this particular link let me copy and paste over here so what i'm doing guys i'm going to copy this particular link and i'm going to paste it over here so here actually you will find out the sentence transformer right sentence transformer so the sentence transformer actually it is able to responsible right it is able to do it is able to do the sentence label embedding so sentence transformer is a python framework for state of art sentence label embedding so this is the complete processor which is already there inside the hugging face by using that you can convert into you can convert your sentence into the embedded vector right and whatever uh model you are seeing like open ai embedding model or any sort of a model they are using these sentence transformer in the backend i hope you are getting so we are having other model as well like board we have elmo right but this model actually they are working on a word label what to bag also it's a very old model it is working on a neural network and yes it is working on a word label it is working on a token label but we don't require this thing why why we don't require it guys tell me so here we want to capture a semantic meaning with respect to the chunks with respect to the sentences i hope this thing is clear now you can go through with the documentation also so this is the official documentation of the sentence transformer now if you want to check more about it so here what you can do you can check about the sentence level embedding right so sentence level embedding so once you will search it you will get a different different model you will get so many articles and definitely you can perform the sentence level article just go and check and yes try to utilize this thing now the next one is what so i hope embedding is clear to all of you now coming to the next point over here so here i mentioned some description also description wise here i clearly mentioned so let me show you that first of all let me remove this particular part this one and just try to read this particular description so here i am saying how sentence transformer differ compared to the token level embedding model such as bird so here is a complete description you can read about it and definitely you will get it okay now the next thing is what vector embedding indexing so what is the meaning of it what is the meaning of the indexing so guys indexing here so whenever see this is what this is my data okay here you can see this is what this is my data and this data basically i'm going to convert into the 
vectors right so along with this vector actually i am going to attach the indexes value also what i am doing i am going to attach the indexes value also now here guys this indexes actually we have a different different way for creating this indexes we have a different different way now over here you can read a vector database is store indexes along with a vector embedding for the fast retrieval and similarity search then why this indexing is required tell me for the fast retrieval and this search so here guys what you can do you can go and check out with this particular article and definitely you will get a lot of information related to the vector indexing we have a different different method related to the indexing so here what i can do i can search about it i can pass this link and see guys this is the article uh, which i mentioned inside my document here you will get the different different and the variance uh very uh like a variety of the method for creating the indexing flat indexing lsh indexing now here you will find out the inverted file indexing so many methods related to the indexing so guys please go and check with this article also you will get to know how to create the indexing okay i hope so far you got lots of information over here now you can easily understand this particular architecture i know video is going to be quite long so what i will do let me explain you this uh, last part of it then i will stop this video and from here from the retrieval part so i will cover in the uh, i will cover up in the next video and i will create one uh like a rack system also from scratch so let's understand the last part of the ingestion process so here you can see the last part is nothing that is uh this one database now guys this database actually it can be anything okay generally we are talking about the vector database now but at the end i will show you one architecture and with that you will be able to understand we can use any sort of a database so here you can see we are creating a different different api related to the different different database think my point so here i mentioned three type of database generally we are using the vector database yes but we have a different different type of database now let's try to read over here this data database is also called the retriever okay this is also called the retriever a vector database graph based database and regular database so vector database is what it uh like store the data it store the embedding for what for the uh, like uh for the uh, like retrieval and for the similarity search basically and we can perform the different different operation like crud operation metadata filtering horizontal scaling serverless with respect to this vector database and nowadays it is going to be a very very popular and the companies related to this vector database they raised a funding in uh, in the billions also so if you will check with the pine cone web eight or uh other databases also right so uh chroma db and files which is the database of the meta you will find out that people are being uh, people are using a lot right i will let you know which one you should use at the end uh, as of now in the basic rec pipeline you can use this vector database but whenever we are going to create an advanced pipeline at that time we'll use the combination of the database now the another database which is graph database so in the graph database basically each and everything is going to be stored in the form of nodes and edges right so node are the primary entities in the graph database each node hold all the all data about a person product business event or another entity okay now we are talking about the ages so ages is nothing connecting part of the graph uh, databases they show the similarity relationship uh, communities you can define the uh, properties and the weight of the ages to fit your purpose so in short basically what i want to say here so i want to say that by using the graph database what i'm going to do i'm going to using the complete power of the data i'm going to perform like a i'm going to get the each and every relationship inside the data right and how we are going to design the data in the graph database in the form of node and edges and in many places basically we are using this graph database like search engine logistic business social network everywhere right we are going to use this graph database now sql databases i think we know about this sql database so it offers a structured data storage and uh, retrieval but it is lacking in the semantic and the flexibility so we generally don't use the sql based database in very few scenario we are going to use it because generally we focus on the graph database and the vector database we use the other form of the no sql database also like mongodb we use the uh, cassandra okay that is uh, cassandra is a column based database uh, columnar based database mongodb is a documented document based database graph database like neo4j okay so yes we can use the no sql based database and it will work fine right now here you can see so where we should use which database so here guys see in the advanced rec system if you are talking about the simple one 
so in that case you can use the vector database only but if you want to present a lot of uh, relationship between the data in that case some other database will be required and the graph database is the best choice for that right so here i have clearly mentioned it is hard to make the choice uh, go between this graph database or the vector database with generative ai large language model and real time data playing is an increasing part in modern application and we are seeing increasing in the combined solution so here we are saying that in an nlm based application in the generative ai application we are going to find out the combined solution getting my point so here you can see neo4j okay this this particular database recently added the ability to perform vector similarity search also they aim to make more sense of the data okay and they want to like combat with the hallucination which is a misleading with respect to the llm by blending similar feature vector to input vector found through lookup into the knowledge graph getting my point so here by using the knowledge graph we are going to represent the relationship of the data and by using the similar uh, by using the similarity search we are going to provide the relevant information i hope you are getting now we have lots of like database but which one you need to select which one you are going to select so here guys you can go and check with these particular link and definitely you will be getting it so here guys you can go and check with this particular link and there you will find out the complete and detailed comparison related to this data base okay so here vector db comparison here is the link guys now just try to go and check with this particular link so you will find out all the database so chroma db is here and here you will find out the different different feature also license tab vss launch filter hybrid search facts geo search right each and every feature based on the different different feature basically you can evaluate your vector database you can evaluate your graph database pinecon is here so just just check with the pinecon oss is there no oss is not there right you can check about the oss what is the oss and all you can check with the licenses right so you can check with the dev language development language bss launch right so there are so many things this is the meta information about the database and here is the search and the models basically to which what all model basically is going to be uh like uh, it's going to be support right now here you can see the model now you can see the api operations every information you will find out related to this vector database and easily you can make a comparison over here getting my point i hope guys you are getting so this was the complete ingestion process now let me summarize it guys and then i will conclude this session in the next class i will explain you the retrieval part and the generation part because this video is going to be quite long so that's why i'm going to be stop it so here the first thing is what introduction is clear right here the rag architecture is clear so let me let me show you this particular thing rag architecture is clear now here end to end pipeline in that i've explained you the ingestion pipeline so what i have explained guys i have explained you the ingestion pipeline okay now just a second so here i have explained you the ingestion pipeline right ingestion pipeline and this ingestion pipeline basically i define a various component so the first component was the so here you can see the first component step by step you can see over here and first look into this architecture and then go with the component so here the component is document and then chunking then here you can see the embedding then here you can see the vector embedding indexing then the database or retriever so here i've completed this ingestion pipeline now in the next one guys so there we'll try to discuss about this retrieval pipeline the part two and part three and then there are other topic basically so here i will be coming up with a multimodal rag rag versus fine tuning evaluation matrices and how to improve rag system with a different different research paper so guys don't miss out this series it's going to be a very very interesting so guys uh yeah i think uh, it is uh, fine for this particular video so thank you thank you for watching this video we'll meet you soon in the next session until thank you bye bye take care thank you